Good evening and welcome to another episode of Unscripted and Unchained RPG Review. I am DM Bloodworth and as you can see by the graphics, uh, tonight's video is uh, going to be a look back at classic D&D adventures. And uh, for the purposes of this uh, first in a series of videos where I will take a look back at some, some old adventures that I really enjoyed from the past, um, I'm going to begin with C2 The Ghost Tower of Inverness by Alan Hammack. Now, the reason why I chose this one, and I'm not going to go into too much detail uh, with showing you the, the content of the adventure, because I don't like to spoil, um, you know, I don't like to spoil adventure modules for my viewers. I just want to talk about some key points of how the, um, how the module actually works and, and such, and some of the things that might be unique about it. Um, but the other reason why I picked this up, and I, I will I will show you that I, I just got this uh, you know physical copy of it in uh, you know from eBay. I, I purchased it. It was twenty five dollars. I, I paid a little bit more for it than your average price because the um, the shipping and handling was was halfway decent. It was only like five bucks. So for thirty dollars, I got it, and it was uh, you know it was in great looking condition and it actually is in fairly uh you know fairly accurate condition there was some pencil marks in it but uh but not anything that i was really worried too much about and um the reason why i wanted to get this was because at rising phoenix con next month i am actually going to be a player in this adventure module and it is going to be run by Alan Hammack, the author of this adventure. So super stoked to, you know, uh, have the opportunity to actually see how this adventure is run um, by its author. And so I think that it's going to be a, a phenomenal thing. And the reason why I wanted to get a decent copy of it is because I wanted to sign it. So I will bring this along with me. I am not going to spoil this adventure for myself, uh, you know, until after I've, uh, you know, experienced being run through this uh, adventure as a player. And then I will certainly sit back and do some uh, evening reading after all of my events of that day and uh, and take a look at it and see where, you know, where things kind of went. Uh, maybe I'll even do a recap. Um while I'm at the event, uh, you know, that'll be something that I've just decided right now that I'll be doing. So really stoked uh, to, uh, you know, to experience this in that way. Uh, so anytime that you're going to a convention and you have the opportunity to be brought through an adventure written by the author of that adventure, you know, make sure that's your first choice when you are, um, you know, when you're, assigning you know which uh what your schedule is going to be i nearly missed out on this initially i had registered for it i had to be one of the first people on that list and i didn't realize with tabletop events that you have to basically double uh, uh double confirm uh your tickets you know i confirmed it once and then there is another way way below i was doing it on my cell phone uh, pulled over at the side of a road trying to get this. So when I got the next morning, I was like, holy crap, none of my schedule is in there. I even shot a, uh, a, a message over to the organizer of the event. I was like, oh my crap, you know, none of my stuff is there. And then I went back and I looked and I was like, oh, okay, I got to double uh, double this up and, and hit that uh, conf confirmation again. And I managed to get the last slot for this game. So, um, you know, I, I was extremely lucky and, and glad that I still got that. Uh, it would have really put a damping, you know, dampener on my uh, experience that I was looking for. So anyway, without further ado, let's take a look at what we have here. So I will switch uh, views here. So here we have the... Uh, the adventure and it's a it's old style so yeah this is you know separate uh separate map you know from the actual uh from the actual module and so this is an adventure for characters levels five through seven 
Uh, I'm assuming we're going to end up with uh, pre-gens. Uh, that's what was uh, that was wh how it was described. Uh, so we will get pre-gens. There are pre-gens in here, but like I said, I'm not going to look at any of that. I don't want to uh, uh, spoil anything for myself. So let's go, and I'm going to do a quick scan through this, a, a quick run through this. Let me make sure that I am on the right thing, and you can see it. So. 36 page uh, adventure module, uh, which which seems to be the, the it was the standard back in the day. Uh, 36 pages seemed to be a, a TSR standard. And here we go. We have a uh, we we have a uh, an image from uh, Roslov, and I, I will give full credits to uh, the other artists that are in here as well. A shadow from the past. The ghost tower of Inverness has loomed ever larger in the mind of the great seer of Ernst. Uh, so that places it firmly in Greyhawk. So this is set in the world of Greyhawk, the official setting of Advanced Dungeons and Dragons First Edition. Now he has convinced the Duke that an expedition should be organized to go to the ancient keep and recover its great treasure, a fabled soul gem. This module was originally written for the official Advanced Dungeons and Dragons game tournament at WinterCon 8, held in Detroit in November of 1979. So we're going way old school with this. All right. It is the second in TSR's competition series modules that were used in official tournaments. This module contains a challenging setting, a scoring system, and characters specifically prepared for the adventure. It may thus be used for a competition among players or groups of players, or as a non-scored adventure included in an ongoing campaign. Also included within are the background information, referees map and notes, encounter descriptions for players, and a background scenario linked to the world of Greyhawk fantasy uh, world setting. If you find this module intriguing, look for TSR logo on future publications from the game Wizards. All right, so it's a tournament model module, and, and I want to show you just the back section of that um, and, and focus a little bit on it. I haven't read it, so I don't... I mean, I haven't read this module or, or run through this module um, since probably the time that it came out. You know, so I would say probably late, seven, you know, 79 or even in the you know early 80s. Um, our group tended to run modules and um, our, my, my DM tended to run modules and then highly modify them so that they were... Um, so that they were different for us. But in many cases, um, we were getting these things as soon as they were like hot off the press. So um, there was very little chance of us having seen a module uh, that our dungeon master was going to run for us. So a lot of times, you know, this was fresh for us. Uh, not so much now, but, uh, you know, back then, you know, it was, you know, we were getting them, like I said, hot off the press, basically. So here we have that very classic uh, dungeon, you know, the blue, the blue and white dungeons. Uh, not very busy on this, right? It's a it's a, a fairly simplistic looking layout here. I mean, this is a little bit more complicated. You're getting a, you know, some um, like near three D kind of look to it. Um, but interesting maps and such. So each of these would go in these sections here. All right, so here we go. So Umber Hoax. My group faced on uh, all the Umber Hoax uh, fairly early in their uh, in their adventuring career. They were probably like level four the first time that they encountered Umber Hoax, and and they had quite a difficult difficult time with them as well uh they're a pretty challenging uh adversary for even levels five to seven 
So competition module, and it goes through uh, the, the background for the module. So notes for the dungeon master and such. Like I said, I'm not going to spoil anything here. How to score a tournament play. Located on the tear out sheets of this module are the DM scoring sheet, a record sheet, and the DM scoring sheet. The bottom section is used to record the amount of time <coughs> in term in turns the party uses. Calculate the movement base of the slowest party member and cross off one turn each time that distance is covered. Or when the group engages a prolonged activity, search, listening, etc. The only other scoring that is done on this page uh, before the final tally is the keyed individual scoring which should be recorded as it occurs. If there is any individual scoring for a particular encounter area, it is noted in the key after the description. If there is no scoring notation after or during an encounter description, there is no score for that encounter. The DM's record sheet should be marked with an armor, classes and movement rates calculated after the party has equipped themselves. If any magic items are brought before leaving or discovered in the dungeon, these should be noted in the appropriate section so that the DM will be aware of the fact, for example, if Zenithar had found a mace plus two but will not have to disclose this to the player, the to hit and damage bonuses can be changed in the manner to facilitate melee. When a character inflicts a sustained damage, that number of points is recorded in the appropriate section. Damage received is recorded even though it may later be healed. Collectively, the scoring of hit points inflicted and hit points received is referred to as combat scoring. Note the damage healed <coughs> is not erased from hit points received, which is a permanent record for scoring purposes of the total damage a character has received. Below the spaces provided for hit points and, and inflicted, that's a typo, the open bottom section's notes is for subjective scoring, how the DM felt the group performed. There is no way to predict all the response, uh, responses possible to every situation, and so a provision is made to award outstanding creativity or cleverness in the following problems of, sol uh, problems of the dungeon, in solving the problems of the dungeon. The DM may choose to award 1% to 20% more points for overall clever play, but should not deduct bad decisions by the party. This should not exceed 20% since the individual scores compromise, uh, comprise part of the team score as well. An entire group will benefit from any ingenious members. All right. Oh, so that's pretty cool as well. And I'm not going to go into all of the uh, nitpicks. Let's see. The soul gem. Let's see. Find a value in gold of all the treasure and magic items brought back by the party, including those drained by the soul gem as they can be restored by this year. I, I, I don't want to, you know, reveal anything. Um, so for non-tournament play, you're just going to run the adventure as written, uh, basically, and set aside all of that. So let's take a look at, um, you know, so let's take a look at some of the way, the layout, right? So you have the start, you have wandering monster tables, uh, not for tournament use. You have dungeon levels, uh, roll of a d12, chance of encounters is on it, one in eight. All right, um, roll d12, chance of encounter is a one in eight. So not very high uh, chance of uh, encounters. All right, uh, so just a one in eight. I typically use like a one in six for encounters, but here are all the possibilities. And they give you the stat blocks for each. And we go through, and then we actually go into uh, Key to the Ruins of the Keep Inverness. And we get through the actual adventure. Now, 
one thing that's unique about this and uh, well not necessarily unique but there's there's one thing about these older tournament adventures is that there's a lot of puzzles um you know that was something that was fairly common especially in you know gary gygax modules uh they just loved puzzles so i'm going to scroll through this like i know this was one puzzle room uh, i even remember this picture uh by jeff d and uh i remember you know vaguely remember going into the the chessboard room and here you have the key for it and such so and just a number of different um you know visual aids so this is what you're going to give the players so that they can actually see what this all looks like as they enter in from the one side and they're trying to obviously navigate across the other some more visual effects visual aids are, are very good to use uh, especially in tournament play um and and these are freely usable by everyone at the table so you give it you know you pass the copy around and everybody can take a look i don't want to look at the character sheet information um, because like I said, I don't want to spoil it for myself, but I do want to focus on the, um, Ducal army, uh, armory prices. So that's pretty cool. So you get some information about the world, um, which is important. And we get back into the adventure. So it's kind of a weird spot to have those in, but... <coughs> upper ruins so dungeon masters record sheet so here we have the fighter magic user cleric monk and thief um gives their levels here so we have their number of hit points and movement base and and so on um we have all of their you know main stats so each player character can be handed their either their just piece of it or you know, this is the record sheet for the Dungeon Master to use as well. Um, treasure taken, total hit point bonus, total damage bonus, hit points received, hit points uh, inflicted, and then notes. And then Dungeon Master scoring sheet, the individual scoring sheet. So you can lay it out for each individual player. And here is your record time, all right? So your record keeping turns elapsed. So this is designed to go up to 180 turns. Uh, and if they're doing real time, um, so that would be um, 1,800 minutes. And my math is terrible. Uh, three hours. So this appears to be like three hours uh, gameplay is what it's designed to uh to run and uh we happen to have four hours to go uh you know for the running of this at uh at rising phoenix con so really looking forward to it and then they give you the back over here so i am going to switch back here and so as you can see i mean it's it's going to be a lot of fun to run through this, especially, you know, I mean, no one has the same mastery as the person who actually wrote the adventure. So uh, I'm sure it'll be a lot of fun to go through. And uh, I'm really psyched about going to this convention. It's, it's my first larger convention that I'm going to. I think this will probably be about double the size, if not larger, than uh, the last convention I went to, which was roughly about 100 people. Uh, this one might be around like 300 and I'm involved in like six different games. I think I'm, I'm playing in four and running two myself. So over a three day span, maybe it's even more than that. It might be playing in six and running two or somewhere close to that. I, I have to double check and, and see what my schedule was. So I'm super prepared for it and uh, really looking forward to it. You know, another thing that I picked up just for, for this is that, you know, I do want to go there and I do want to, you know, everyone I meet, uh, you know, whether they're playing at my table or I'm theirs, 
you know, I just want to, you know, network and touch bases. So I, I made some, uh, you know, I had some cards made up, you know, so I have my unscripted and unchained uh, RPG review uh, business cards with all of my contact information on there. You know, the channels, uh, the channels address and everything. I, I have a hundred of these that I can hand out, you know, during the, during the convention. And uh, like I said, everyone I play with, uh, whether I'm the player or the DM, I'm going to be handing these out and um, just just really, really excited about this coming up. So I will continue doing series of these, uh, you know, with some of my older modules. I don't have as many modules as, you know, in physical form um, because when it came to AD&D, um, I was usually a player uh, back in the day. I was not the dungeon master. And uh, even the AD and D uh, that I'm running now, I'm uh, you know although I have the like the physical copies obviously of uh, you know keep on the Borderlands and 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 some of the other ones, uh, but most of the adventures that I do now uh, as a dungeon master I'm writing myself, and so those are um, you know that's just the way that most people when they become much more experienced. Uh, with uh, dungeon mastering their games, they're going to end up doing most of their writing. Uh, and I think that's the best way to go. But if you do use official modules, uh, especially the older ones, then uh, you have to tweak these things up and, and change them around a bit uh, because there is a chance that people have already played through it and you want to give them a totally different experience the second or third or, or you know, this could even be like the fourth or fifth time through for some people. So uh, it's great to uh, change things up so it's uh, it's still fresh and unique for them. So anyway, thanks for joining. I hope you liked this video. And, um, you know, if you have any questions or comments, if you have any, um, if you have any adventure modules that you think I should, you know, focus on for the next time that I do a looking back at classic D&D &D adventures, then just let me know. And I will certainly... Uh, Put those out and when i say classic i'm talking about pre-1990 um let's just use that number um that arbitrary uh decade marker uh for for now and then i'll i'll, I'll take a look at some more more stuff that'll be on the second edition and third edition range uh once i you know once i get to them so anyway thanks for joining i hope you like this video and um Hey, tomorrow's Friday, so we're just about on the weekend, and uh, you know tomorrow is St. Patrick's Day, so enjoy your St. Patrick's Day if that's something that you celebrate, and um, you know and have a, a great weekend. I will be doing a video for sure um, on Monday, talking about my experience seeing Honor Among Thieves, uh, you know, and I'm, I'm actually going to do a little setup for that and talk you know, on my channel about that pre the movie. And then I will do a, um, basically a recap of the movie, uh, spoiler free, um, hopefully, but going to do a, a short, short video, uh, talking about, uh, leading up into that movie and, and how that came about. So without further ado, you all have a great evening and take care.